Electricity occurs naturally and has been observed for thousands of years. We use electricity constantly in our daily lives and it is one of the most important types of power and energy that we use. But did you know that electricity is made up of microscopic electrons? Yes, they move and carry an electrical charge. What? Now if this is your first time to hear that, I would like to welcome you to another wonderful journey here in Fun and Learning with me, Teacher Danny, in the world of physics. to explain because it is something that we cannot see. It is unlikely that anyone will properly see electricity because the electrons which it is made of are so small. But with the help of Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Edison, Nikola Tesla, Alessandro Volta, Michael Faraday, and other inventors and physicists, who devoted their life in studying and used their knowledge of current, conductivity, and electric circuits to create the light bulb and other technologies related to electricity. We were able to find the usefulness and you are able to watch me through this video because computers or mobile phones are charged with electricity. Now we use electricity every day in almost all gadgets and other objects all around us. Now, electricity can produce heat, light, sound, movement, and so many things. But how is it made? Remember that everything is made of atoms. Well, atoms are made of electrons, which are negatively charged, protons, which are positively charged, and neutron, which has no charge. Now, the center of the atom contains a nucleus, which is made of neutrons and protons. Now, take note that the same charges repel each other or move away from each other while opposite charges attract each other. Now these varying changes are important so that static electricity can be produced. Now, when there is a movement of electrons, electricity then is made. Again, electricity is made when electrons of the atom move from one atom to another. Imagining this would give us a headache, but to visualize, one billion of electrons can fit into a ball that is at the tip of a ball pen. Can you imagine that? What? Now, as mentioned a while ago, electricity is produced when electrons are transferred. Now, how are electrons being transferred? How do we move charged particles? Now let's have a short experiment. Now using plastic comb, small pieces of paper, and your hair, we will try to move particles without touching them. Now here's what we are going to do. First, we place a small pieces of paper on your desk or table. Second, you place your comb beside the pieces of paper, then you observe. Is there any movement? Now, briskly rub the comb against your hair. Then, try to put the comb near the pieces of paper. 
Now, I would like you to write your observations in the comment box below. Now, what did the rubbing of the comb against your hair do to the paper? If you triumphantly did the experiment a while ago, it means that you have moved charged particles and you have created electricity as we have mentioned. Now, electricity is made when electrons move from one atom to another. Now, in nature, there are different types of electricity. Some organisms can produce their own electrical charge. Electric eels. Catfish. Fireflies. Stingrays are some animals which can produce electrical charges. Your brain and the nervous system produce electricity also. That's why information from your sense organs are transferred in impulses. of natural electricity. Now, when there is a building of stationary electrons on the surface of an object, the shock comes from the transfer of electron to an object that is more positive. Now this is what we call as static electricity. Now, if you charge two balloons by rubbing them on your clothing, numerous negative charges will be created. Now, the balloons will repel each other because of the number of negative charges. Now, if the balloon is negatively charged and you have pepper on a plate, the pepper will jump towards the balloon because it has positive charge and the opposites attract. Now, this is a kind of static electricity. Now, take note that there are two ways to produce static electricity. One is when electrons are transferred from one object to another due to friction or by rubbing and 
2. Opposite charges are built between two objects and these objects are placed near each other. Now, have you experienced a weak electric shock when you unexpectedly brush your skin to a metallic surface? Now, this phenomenon is also static electricity. Both the metallic surface and your skin are neutral. But when you unexpectedly brush your skin against the surface of the metal, the electrons from the metallic surface transfer to your skin. Now, when you remove your body to the metallic surface, the positive charges or the protons of the metallic surface became attracted to the electrons of your skin, which resulted in a weak shock. Hence, it does show that there is static electricity in nature, right? Now, did you know that static electricity is not always weak? Sometimes, it can power up to 150 million light bulbs in just one strike. Do you think it is possible? Yes, that is true because lightning is a very powerful static electricity. But do you know how a bolt of lightning is formed? Good! Now listen. When wind particles of the clouds rub against each other, they become oppositely charged. Now electrons from negatively charged clouds will then quickly drop towards the positively charged clouds. Now when this happens, a giant spark of lightning is produced. Now, do you think electricity such as lightning can reach you? Let's study current electricity to answer that. Now to visualize electricity flow, let's use water coming from the hose as an example. Electricity is like the water flowing through this long tunnel. Now the flowing of electricity is called an electrical current. Currents of electricity flow through power lines, transformers, to the wiring. That's why, from power plants to the wirings, electricity was able to reach our homes. Now, how do we measure electricity coming from these power plants to our home? We are going to compare electricity to a garden hose again with a nozzle. Now, voltage is the pressure or force of the electricity that is inside an electric wire. Now, we measure voltage in volts. Now, just like the water in a garden hose, now once the switch is turned on, a certain amount of electrical pressure or the voltage is available to be used. Now, here's a quick fact. All electric appliances either use 110 volts or 220 volts of electricity. So you better ask your mom and dad first how much pressure is needed to power up your appliance or else, boom, <laughs> you might be in danger. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> now, amperage measures the electric current or the number of electrons that move through the wire. Amperage can be compared to the spray of water coming out from the garden hose. Now the nozzle can be opened just like a little bit or it can be opened a lot. Now some electric appliances such as the light bulbs require small amperage of electricity to operate while larger devices like hair dryers, uh, refrigerators, and other big appliances require more amperage. Now, the quantity of electrical energy used is calculated in watts. Now, this is like the amount of water that comes out from a garden hose. Now, to increase the amount of water flow out of the hose, you can either open top further or increase the size of the opening of your nozzle. Now, the amount of energy we use in our homes is measured in kilowatt hours. 
Now to recognize that how much energy is used when your mom or dad starts to yell at you and say, Stop wasting so much energy! It simply means that you are consuming a lot of energy. Now speaking of small sources of electricity, a dry cell can store electricity such as these small batteries. These are relatively safe sources of electricity. Now these are used for experimentation and study, but care should be taken to avoid short circuits. Now these short circuits are when wires heat up and waste energy. This can occur if too much amperage are getting pulled through household wires. Now this can cause fire. That is why houses have circuit breakers and fuses to control busting of appliances. Now wait, what is circuit by the way? Now try to open your light. What part of the circuit would you go first to open it? Yes, the most familiar part of the circuit we know is the switch. But without wiring connections, power source, and loads, we cannot make electricity flow. Now, a circuit is needed to make current flow through a wire. The switch is used to open the circuit and stop the flow of electricity. In an open circuit, wires are not connected or the switch is open. This means that electricity will not be able to flow. Closing the switch allows electricity to continue its flow. This is a closed circuit. The light bulb stays on while the switch is closed. Wait, hold on there. This is quite confusing because we are used to saying open the switch to turn on the light. But, 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 in the switch of a circuit, if the switch is closed or it is aligned in the wiring, the load or the light bulb will operate. <gasps> Now there are two types of circuit, the parallel and the series. Now what's the difference between the two types? Now first, in a parallel circuit, each of the bulbs, or we call them as loads, is directly connected to the power source, which means if a bulb is removed or burned out, the other bulb will still work. But in a series circuit, each of the bolts or loads is connected in a circle or one path. Now this means if a bulb is removed or burnt out, the connection is damaged and none of the lights will light. Now a familiar example of this is our Christmas lights. Some of our Christmas lights won't operate if one bulb is missing or damaged. This is a series type of Christmas light. So, if you don't want to hustle on this, try purchasing parallel. Now, can you differentiate now the two types of circuits? That's good!
if you think electricity is such a joy to watch, better think twice. Remember, dealing with electricity has potential dangers. Now here are some safety measures from Teacher Danny to prevent yourself from being electrocuted or having trouble with electricity. First, do not create an electrical octopus. Only use the standard number of plugins provided. Number two, always unplug electrical devices before cleaning or repairing. Three, never put a finger or any object, most especially those conductors, in an empty socket. Four, always replace damaged cords. But since you are young, ask your parents for help regarding this. Five, fly kites in open spaces only and watch out for electrical wirings outside. Six, never run cords under heavy furniture. Seven, never touch loose wires. Eight, never use electricity by water. Remember our lesson on conductors and insulators? If you have missed that, better watch it again. I'll place the link here. And 9. Do not climb trees by power lines. That is not safe and you are not a monkey. And 10. When you do experiments, only use batteries, never in a current electricity. <gasps> So remember, electrical energy or electricity carries electrons of energy that come out from a source that flows to a wire to the receiving device where it will be used. Current electricity is electricity in motion, where electrons are said to be flowing from a source or device. Electricity can also be transformed to magnetism, heat, and light. And in order to avoid accidents, it is advised to follow procedures on how to use electricity properly. Electricity can be safe when it is used wisely and properly. Now, thank you very much for joining our wonderful adventure in the world of physics. Now, I hope you learned a lot from electricity and never forget our ground rules or you might be electrocuted so that's not a good case so always remember electricity might be useful but they can also be harmful until next time bye bye